Welcome to Electron Line. Our fourth identity involves the curl, but it tells us here that the curl of the product of a scalar function multiplied by a vector function should be equal to the scalar function times the curl of the vector function plus the gradient of the scalar function multiplied via the cross product with the vector field. So here we have our two examples again. We have the vector field and the scalar function defined. So what we need to do is we need to first multiply the scalar function with the vector field, which we did over here, and then we have to take the curl of that. So I did already a little bit of work. So now we need to work this out for the left side of the equation. On the right side, we need to find the gradient of f, the scalar function. Then we have to find the curl of the vector field right here. Then we have to multiply the scalar function times the curl of the vector field. And then we have to multiply the gradient with the vector field via the cross product. Then we sum all those together, and that should equal what we have over here. So let's first work out the left side of this equation. We're going to take the curl of the product of the scalar field and the vector field of the scalar function and the vector field. So this is equal to i times the parcel of y with respect, uh, with the parcel with respect to y of this quantity right here. So notice we have three terms that have a y in it. So in this case, I'll be x squared for here. Here that'll be plus 3y squared. And here this will be 4yz. Minus the j component. So now we take the partial. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're not done yet. I'm skipping one of the terms. Let's see here. So we, all we did so far is we took the partial with respect to y of this, but now we have to subtract the partial with respect to z of this quantity right here. And as you can see, since there's no z components here, that simple would be zero. So I neglected that, but I should have at least shown you that you also have to multiply it times this. So minus the j component. So we have the partial with respect, with respect to x of this quantity right here. So we have two terms that have an x in it. So this is 2xy plus 4xz minus, oh, I can't finish it yet, minus the partial with respect to z of this quantity right here. And we do have two z terms. So this becomes minus x to the fourth and minus x squared y squared. Since I'm out of room here, I'll then add the k component right here. And so that would be equal to the partial respect to x of this quantity right here, which is equal to 3x squared y squared. And here that would be plus y to the fourth minus the partial with respect to y of this quantity. We only have one with a y in it, so that would become minus 2, uh, that would be 2x squared y z. So now we have the x, the x, the y, and the z component, or the i, j, and k components of this result right here. That'll be the curl of the product of those two. So now we move over to the right side. First, we take the gradient of the scalar function. So we take the partial with respect to x. We get 2x in the i direction, the partial with respect to y, plus 2y in the j direction, and the partial with respect to z simply 0k. So that would be this quantity right here. Now we take the curl of f. The curl of f is defined right here. So this is equal to i times the partial y respect to the partial respect to y of this quantity right here, which is simply 1 minus the partial with respect to z of this quantity, which is 0, minus the j component, the partial with respect to x of this, which is 0 minus the partial with respect to z of this, which is x squared, and then plus the k component. And let's see here, the k component, uh, that would be partial of x with respect to x of this, which is y squared, minus the partial with respect to y of that, which is 0. So this would be equal to 1 in the i direction, plus x squared in the j direction, plus y squared in the k direction. So now we have the curl of our vector field. Now we're going to multiply the scalar function 
time the curl that we just found. So the scalar function is right here. So multiply each of these components times x squared plus y squared. So this becomes equal to 1 times this. So this would be x squared plus y squared in the i direction plus here we have x to the fourth plus x squared y squared in the j direction and then plus we have x squared y squared plus y to the fourth in the k direction. So that's the product of the scalar field times the curl. And finally, we need to take the gradient, which we got over here, and we're going to multiply it via the cross product with the f here, with the, scale, with the vector function. So this will be written like this. We have i, j, k, the components of the gradient, which is 2x, 2y, and 0, and the components of our vector field, which is x squared z, y squared x, and y plus 2z. And when we multiply those out, we get the following. We get i times 2y times this, that would be 2y squared, 2y squared, and 2y times this would be plus 4yz minus the j component. So notice that when we add the 0 times this, we don't add anything over here. So now we take minus j component, so this times this minus this times this. Again, we have a 0 there, which makes it a little bit easier. So we have 2x times y, so that's 2xy plus 2x times 2z, which is 4xz. And then we get plus k times, so now multiply this times this, so we get 2x squared y squared minus, because we do have a minus here, 2x squared yz. 2x squared yz. So now we have all three components of this. We have all three components of this, which means we're going to have to add these two together. Let's see, right, right up, up, I'm going a little too far up, right here. There we go. So we have to add this and this together, which is the right side of this equation, and set it equal to the left side equation, which we have right there. So let's go ahead and add the x components together to see if we get the same result as we have over here. So when we add these two together, we get x squared plus y squared plus 2y squared plus 4yz. And we go over here, and we see that we have x squared plus y squared. Ah, yes, we do. So we have x squared, so we have an x squared. We have a y squared plus we have a 2y squared, that would be plus 3y squared. And we have plus 4yz, plus 4yz and that is in the i direction. So yes indeed, we have an x squared, a 3y squared, and a 4yz, so that is correct so far. Now we're going to add the j components together, so plus. We have a j component here, and we have a j component here, but notice this is negative, so we have an x to the fourth plus x squared y squared. We have a minus 2xy, and we have minus 4xz, and that's in the j direction. So there's four terms there. Let's see if we have the same over here. So I have a, a minus 2xy, so that's the same. A minus 4xz, that's the same. A minus times a minus becomes a plus x to the fourth, that's the same. And a minus times a minus gives us a plus x squared y squared. So that's the same as well. So, so far, so good. Now for the k component. So plus k. So when we add the k components together, we add this, and we add this together. So that gives us an x squared y squared plus y to the fourth. And then here we get plus 2x squared y squared plus 2x squared y squared, but we already have one. That means we're going to end up with three of them. So that gives us 3x squared y squared, two here and one there, and finally a minus 
2x squared y z so three terms we come over here we have 3x squared y squared which is the same we have a plus y to the fourth which is the same and a minus 2x squared y z which is the same which shows that this identity appears to work with our example so the curl of the product of a scalar and a vector quantity is equal to the scalar quantity times the curl of the vector quantity plus the gradient of the scalar quantity multiplied via the cross product with the vector quantity. And so you can see that that identity does appear to work. And here's a nice example of it.